Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. We're out here in the carving tent. You know what? Decided I'd make this video again. I've made it once or twice before, but I always think it's a good idea to uh, recap something that I feel uh, anybody that runs a chainsaw, homeowner, or even new carvers should really know how to do. Especially if you're, you know, you're running a saw often enough. Even if you're a homeowner, there's really no reason to not learn this very important thing and that is how to sharpen your chain listen the economy is nuts right you can purchase a tool it is kind of expensive but that could make this chain last for a while a while rather than throw this chain out and buy a brand new one for what 25 30 bucks depending on the saw you have even right because this process is for uh, any saw you just have to buy the specific tools to do the job which we'll go over but listen, save yourself some money, learn this skill, learn this technique, and do it yourself. Stop taking it to the dealer, stop taking it to the shop. They don't need to sharpen your chain. You can do it. They're gonna do the same thing that you can do right here in your own shop or your own carving area. If you guys wanna learn how to sharpen your chainsaw the way that I do, be sure to stick around, give me a thumbs up, give me a follow. Let me know what you think of this video. Let's get started guys so we are taking a look right here okay first thing we want to look at right first thing i want to look at is the chainsaw i'm going to be sharpening in this case steel has all the numbers you need right here most saws do some cheap no name saws don't but you want to know what size chain bar pitch all that kind of stuff you don't really need length of the bar that ain't a big deal now this is upside down Okay, so let's take a look at this other one. This is a carving bar, so it looks weird. If you're a homeowner, I know yours might not look like this, but it's still kind of the same setup. So if it is a steel, and that's what I can speak for, because that's what I have, you'll see these numbers right down here, right? This is a one slash four piece. That's a quarter pitch chain, all right? 64, let's see, right here, here's the one underneath Underneath this first number, there's another number right there. This is 0 0.043 gauge chain. So a quarter pitch, 43 gauge chain. Now when I come over to this saw, this is the same, okay? It's upside down. Let's see, what else? What else can we look at that's different maybe? Here's, a, here's another saw. This is 3 8 43 gauge chain. Okay, so these chains are all small 43 gauge chain. But there's a difference. That one said 3 8, this one says quarter now what does that mean well that means if you're going to use this style file right here these are awesome they are pricey but they line you up and you get a very sharp chain every time you don't really have to think about your angle a whole lot you don't have to you know be some expert a little bit of practice and you guys can master this tool right here so you looked at your saw right in this case it's a quarter pitch 43 gauge so I went over to the steel dealer. I said, listen, man, this is what I've got. I actually took a picture of this. That's what you should do with your phone. Take a picture of your saw, go over to your dealer if you want to buy steel and say, hey, what file will fit this saw? In this case, this is what he lined me up with. Quarter pitch. It's a really small file, so it's going to work and do what we need to do. Now, if you're like, geez, I don't want to spend all that money, then you can get just the file, a round file and a flat file. Now the cool thing about this is the round and flat file are all in one, so you do the filing for everything all at the same time. This takes more technique, more practice. This, people that don't know what they're doing, don't do this very often, usually mess up their chains. Okay, so if you're a homeowner, you do this once in a blue moon, it might be worth just spending, you know, the what, 35, 40, 45 bucks on this thing okay these are cheap you can just get files i put my own handles on them you can get files for you know probably get two packs for like 15 bucks it's they're not that expensive don't hold me to the prices guys prices are changing all the time so same thing you can talk to you know the dealer if you go to a steel dealer and say hey what files individual files if you don't want to get this so, but this is what we're going to focus on today so you got this neat little file right it comes in a pouch I've got a couple, I got, I got many sizes because honestly, I use these every few times that I file. Um, and when I say that, I mean like 
Every third time that I hand file with the flat file or the round file, just by hand quick, like second or third time, I'll use this to square everything up and straighten everything out. Now, you see the setup here where the saw is, right? This is a really good idea, but it, you don't have to use it. Now, I've made this a fixture that I put in my, my saw horse. You guys could put this on your bench, whatever, but all I basically did was I took a thick board, hammered the vise in, chainsaw sharpening vise deal right into it, took another piece of scrap, and screwed these two together, so the saw sits up. I don't like it that when the saw is low, I, I like this height, so that's kind of why I added this. It also keeps the saw a little more stable. Now you may have to tilt your saw up or down in the vise, because if you decide to use this vise, you need to make sure this piece here, the chain is not rubbing, okay? You wanna make sure that, wrong way, you wanna make sure that chain doesn't rub on anything. It's always tough to spin because these are battery saws, so they don't like to spin easy by hand. All right, so you don't wanna be hitting anything all right and it clamps in the center of the bar now if you do have a battery saw remove the battery all right keep yourself safe what i'm going to try to do is set this up so you guys can see well and uh, we'll start sharpening this saw all right guys hopefully this view will work for you looks like you guys can see most of the bar Oop, sorry about that you can because here's where everything stops so here's the whole bar it's a short bar so you got this file right if you look there's an arrow Okay, on this side, flip it over. There's no arrow. Spin it, there's an arrow. Now one way works this way, and then you have to flip and spin so it works the other way. Now, how do you figure that out? Well, what you wanna be doing is putting this round file and a tooth and a flat file on what I call the raker. So tooth, then raker, then it goes a tooth, then a raker. The tooth is what should be sharp. Now, if you look, you have some teeth that go this way and some that are cut the opposite way. So you start on one side. Now, it's a good idea to find where to start. Now, there usually is a marked link. In this case, it's green. Some chains, you'll have two teeth facing the same way, and I'll start right there with no marked link. So you have two teeth in the same direction, and I'll start with one and finish with the other one and use that as my starting point so I'm not doing everything a hundred times all right anyway so we line this up right we put that round one in your tooth and push this so it's against the bar now you see the angle this automatically creates and you come across and you try to follow that angle all the way through now I do this about three times usually all right one two three Move it just a little. Give yourself enough space so you're not hitting the saw if you have to. Keep things forward, whatever it is. One. Now, sometimes, if you're using this clamp, it's better to have it up near the nose so this there isn't so much flex in your bar because that happens, the bar will start to flex. Especially if you have a longer bar than this. All right, you guys, do you realize how easy this is? I know, it, some people are probably like, this does not look perfect, man. They're all wobbly and stuff. Believe me, it'll be just fine. This is how I do my stuff. They stay sharp, chainsaw carve, and cut some firewood, run in saws on the regular. This works for me. Will it work for you? It should. If you're set up, and this is how you're doing it. Now, if you don't have this and you don't want to get one of these, what I do is I put this arm over the saw and kind of slouch down so the saw's in my armpit and I hold it in with my elbow to my body so the saw doesn't go anywhere. And then I sharpen. Now the saw isn't moving, but if it's not in the vise, I keep the file closer to the saw. It just makes it easier to stabilize. Okay, and we're done. We're already back to our green link. 
So this is how this has been, right? Now I'm switching sides. You can't just flip it. That doesn't work. You need to give it a spin, give it a flip, and see where everything is, right? So here's this arrow still facing this way. We're at the wrong angle. Now give it a spin. Okay, find the tooth you want to start on. And do the same amount. Now, same amount is can be like rule of thumb. Sharp is sharp. That's what you're going for. So if you have a tooth that's really messed up, you hit something, do that tooth one or two extra swipes. These are in pretty good shape, so I just do them all the same or you know three to four just kind of depends i'm looking for a nick or a piece moot like missing in the tooth if there's a piece missing then i might hit it an extra one or two times those things happen if the teeth are just extremely dull when you're cutting it's smoking the wood's blackening you might need to go over these a few more times than two or three you guys might have to do this a couple times now something you can do carefully you can go ahead and feel it. You'll feel the tooth just barely grab your finger. It's sharp, like almost like a razor blade. That's what we want. We want like razor blade sharp. Why? Because a sharper chain is a safer chain. Sounds crazy, right? But it's the same concept as like knife carvers. Like a dull knife is more dangerous. Why? Because you have to use more force. You're putting more pressure on the tool to do the job. You're forcing the chainsaw into the wood. You're forcing it to make the cut. You're pushing hard, and you shouldn't. The weight of the saw should do the work. And if it's not, you need to sharpen that chain. Now, these tools right here by Steel, these things are awesome. They work great. They line you up perfectly. Again, they do the teeth, and they do that raker, so everything's at the same height that it should be. No, they're not at the exact same height because that raker is usually a little bit lower than your tooth. So that's where it should be. And I hope this video helped you guys out. It's always, I feel like, a good refresher, a video that should really never get old. Especially with, you know, new carvers. Uh, there's always a homeowner just getting a saw. Like, man, I wish I knew how to... Sharpening saws are so intimidating. It's not easy and I have to take it to somebody. But you don't. This tool right here, it makes it simple. It really, really does. All right, guys, that's it. Real quick video on how to sharpen your chainsaws using this tool from steel, all right? Homeowner, chainsaw carver, doesn't really matter. This can be for anybody. Now, you guys wanna see how sharp this is? Check out some videos popping up, my chainsaw carving videos, because my saws are all sharp. I'm trying my best to not run dull chains and dull saws. So if you wanna see how a sharp saw cuts, watch a video. If you guys enjoyed this, if it's helped you out, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.